another month, another favorites video, and another crazy sweater worn by moi. My hunt for a clarifying shampoo has been a long and tedious one, but luckily I found one this month. It is the Suave Naturals Daily Clarifying Shampoo, and I had just been looking for a new clarifying shampoo because I have a lot of buildup in my hair, especially at the end of the week because I don't wash my hair every day, and then you know you use products, and it's just nice to have that deep cleanse at the end of a week. Fun fact, this is the family size, and I am going to be using this all for myself, so I guess I am my only family. I have been using and loving the Simple Cleansing Micellar Water. This one is almost gone. Europe and other places in the world, it's easier to find cleansing waters in the drugstore, but we in America over here are a little bit behind you guys. This one you can just get at the drugstore, at Target. They are literally everywhere doesn't cost a ton of money. I love how hydrating this is, but it's also cleansing, so your skin doesn't feel dry afterwards, and you don't have to rinse it off. You just use a cotton pad, and this will remove every last bit of makeup on your face. Like, you will be surprised at how much dirt is still on your face, even if you use, like, a regular face wash. If you follow up with this, you will see all of the extra gunk coming off, which is pretty terrifying, but also very gratifying at the same time. Also been loving this guy right here, which is the Honest Organic Healing Balm. And yes, this is found in the baby section of Target. I found out about this because a makeup artist had it on set once and I loved it. So it's essentially what it says here, a nourishing ointment for dry, irritated, or sensitive skin. And you can use this anywhere on your body. The first time I ever used it, I used it on my hands because they were really dry. And you can also use this on your elbows. I've used it on my lips before bed because I've had really, really chapped lips. I just love how it says on here, use daily for healthy, happy skin. <laughs> So I started using Puff Off from Benefit, and this is an eye gel, so it's not technically makeup. You just put this on underneath your eyes before you put on any makeup, and it feels so, so good because it has this little tip that actually looks like a little iron, and it's really, really cold, and it feels amazing on your eyes, especially if you have really, really tired eyes. It kind of has like a pinkish, color to it so it does help with brightening. Now for lippy lips, first of all I have to say thank you to the viewer that brought me this at my story event in New York because you are my hashtag hero. So I had talked about how much I loved the Smith's Rosebud Minted Lip Balm and I wanted to know if it existed in a squeezy tube. You guys were awesome and told me that it did and then there was this one girl that came to my story event and she just took awesome to a whole new level and brought me not one, but two of these. So now I have two of these in a squeezy tube and I am obsessed with this. I am obsessed with her and I am obsessed with you guys for being so amazing. Oh, I almost forgot. I have really been liking this makeup brush too. So this one is from Sephora and it is the Pro All Over Powder Brush. And then it has the number 61 on it. I just kind of got this on a whim because I've been looking for a bigger powder brush to use and I did not think that I was gonna love this brush as much as I really do. I had no idea that this would be like the best powder brush that I've ever used. It is super, super dense, so it picks up a lot of powder, but then when you put it on, it just goes on so evenly and so nicely. I am so impressed by this brush. Sticking with the red-orange theme that I am clearly very into right now because I'm realizing that my nail polish could blend in with my sweater and that my lipstick could also blend in with my sweater. So obviously I have some kind of thing going on this month where I just wanna look like a tomato. I have really been liking this nail polish from Essie. It is called Himp Anima and I have been wearing it on my nails and I enjoy looking down and seeing the color and I am going to stop talking about it now because it is a nail polish and it is just this color and it is cool. So it is going down now. So this month I finally got a pair of key sunglasses. 
because I had been wanting some for so long. I got these from Nasty Gal because they were sold out on the actual Key website, but as you can see, I can't stop putting them on. I just really enjoy embracing the inner cat inside of me, and these sunglasses help me do that. So this isn't really a snack or food, but it is a drink. And I have really been into tea recently, especially in New York where it's colder and I just want something to help me wind down at the end of the night. So I've been drinking the Yogi Honey Lavender Stress Relief Tea and it just comes in little packets. If I can open up the box here, you just put these in some hot water and you're good to go. And I like tea where I don't have to do anything to it. So you don't have to sweeten this or anything or add milk to it. It's just really good as is. And there's a frog on the box, which has nothing to do with anything, but I just thought I would point that out. Let's just take a deep breath and prepare ourselves for what I'm about to say. You might want to sit down for this. I have slowly been weaning myself off of the Bath and Body Works candles. The shock, the horror, I know. And that's just because I've been trying to move over to soy candles. Soy candles burn cleaner, which means the air that you are in turn breathing back into your lungs is also cleaner. The soy candle that I have been really loving is from Kobo and it is the vetiver and shaved vanilla candle. And it just has a really warm, comforting scent to it. Another thing that I have loved about the soy candles is that they have a stronger fragrance. So this is not a big candle at all, it's one wick. And this will literally fill up my entire space. Not just the room it's in, but it'll also go into like the bathroom and my bedroom and I really love that. So I couldn't help but do a little bit of math because I'm a huge nerd in that way. And I discovered that while these Kobo candles usually run between 35 and $38, the overall price is cheaper than getting a Bath and Body Works candle on sale when they have like their two for 22 sale. This candle right here will burn for at least 80 hours. Bath and Body Works candles will usually burn for 20 hours. I have noticed that's kind of their max. Maybe certain scents burn a little bit longer. So that's a fourth of the burning time of this candle. So if you get your two for 22 candles, that's 40 hours of burn time. Now to make the 80 hours, you're gonna need four of those candles. To get the same burn time as this one candle, you're gonna need four Bath and Body Works candles. So that comes out to $44 plus tax, whatever. This is not including any kind of coupons that you may use. This is just going off of their regular two for 22 sale. So it's even more expensive if you buy them when they're not on sale. So this candle that costs between 35 and $38 actually ends up being cheaper than the amount of candles that you would need from Bath and Body Works to equal the same burn time as this candle. I definitely am a believer now and I don't think I can ever go back to non-soy candles. Loving the newest issue of Darling Magazine, but I do have to say I am a little biased because this is the issue that my article came out in and I am so excited still to just see this and hold this because this is the first time that I've written something where it has appeared somewhere public, like in a magazine. And this shoot on top of it for Darling was so much fun. I got to hold a giant donut for this shoot. So that is kind of everything right there. Recently, I watched the movie What If, and it essentially revolves around a guy and a girl, and the girl is in a long-term committed relationship, and then she meets this guy, and they are friends, and so it kind of explores the whole can guys and girls really be friends thing, and you can kind of guess where everything ends up at the end, but I really loved it. It was a super cute movie, and it also just made me think more about the guy-girl friend dynamic, which I'm actually gonna talk about in a 5M FU video, because there's a lot to talk about there, but it was a cute movie. 
So during the last month, I was introduced to a site called Too Damn Young. It was started by a young woman named Vivian who lost her mom when she was really young and then more recently lost her grandmother and realized when she was going through these losses that there was no resource, especially for young people, where they could go and just grieve. I'm a person that lost a parent when I was a teenager. My dad passed away when I was 17 and honestly I wish that something like this had existed. I will have her site down below so if you have lost someone recently or just in general or you know someone who has lost someone, I think this site is an amazing place. I'm so happy and so proud of Vivian for starting something like this because it is courageous, it's brave, and it's something that the world needs. Who are you? That has been my favorite thing to think about this month and also to ask people. It's such a short and concise question, but it's not something that we're ever really asked. We're asked, what do you do? What do you like? But we're never asked who we actually are. So that is gonna be my question for you guys this month. Who are you? I wanna know down below in the comments. And it's not about what you do or what you like, it's about who you are. Because I think a lot of times people think that what you do defines who you are. And I really think it's the other way around. Who you are defines what you do. I am a confused 26 year old that is very introverted, but likes being social. I'm making an effort to put myself out there more. I am joyful, I am grateful, but I also am human and I have my moments where I am sad or upset or frustrated or angry and I'm just learning to embrace all of that and trying to live my life as authentically in every moment as I possibly can. So while that answer may seem like it's all over the place, I think that's a good representation of who I am right now. I think it's a powerful question, and even if you don't answer in the comments, I think it's definitely something we're thinking about. That is gonna be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my faves and looking at my really bright sweater here. These right here are like almost on my boobs. I know that is a very strange thing to like about the sweater, but it is something that I like. So with that, I am gonna go. Peace out, everyone. I love you.